Booker Tov, everybody. As uh, where I am, good afternoon. As uh, those were just heard, so we uh, have the. I'm broadcasting from from Lisbon, Portugal. As we are, uh, we're getting ready. We're here. We're a couple of days early for uh, the Torah Motion Jewish History Trip. We started this back in 2011. Um, Mark Shapiro he called me if I would want to organize a trip to Prague and Budapest. That was back 11 years ago, and uh, it was a, a fantastic trip. I had basically traveled nowhere besides Israel, uh, I'd been almost nowhere. And since then, uh, pretty much every summer, we added a new trip and repeated some of the old trips. So, and the, the Portugal trip was was supposed to happen in 2020, uh, but please God, it'll be starting the beginning of next week. And uh, next week, um, please God, I'll be in Porto. And uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to we're going to start to share at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time, but it's not fair to people who are their schedule. So I will not give the regular share on the, on, on the sitter. I don't wanna miss a class if I can at all avoid it. I try hard to avoid that. So I'll, what I'll do next week, uh, we'll skip a week on the sitter. So if you can't make it, I fully understand. And um, um, you won't miss anything that way. We'll go back to what we did, uh, you know, last summer, a couple of summers ago, we'll do a class and for care but so i'll send it out without please god be at 5 30 eastern time um next friday okay but we can get started today on uh mis more mis more luto that we have a short uh mis more we finished hodu last week it's really uh sort of hodu that we discussed the last you know three weeks is sort of a longer form of thanksgiving remember we've only started sukkah de zimra you know just uh Bar Shamar, and then we go to Hodu, and as we all know, and we've discussed um, the Spardim say Hodu before, um, before Bar Shamar, but um, Mizmor Shir, everybody agrees, you stay right afterwards. Mizmor Shir is a much shorter um, song of thanksgiving and praise, so we'll go through it and uh, hopefully I'll find uh, some interesting things. Okay, so the first thing is there's really uh, two ways of looking at Mizmor the Torah. It's only four psukim. It's Tehillim 100. That's where it comes from. This is, again, is one of, uh, well, most of, of um, psukim Zimra is in, in Tehillim, the main parts beginning from Ashrei, but this was at the end of Tehillim. So this is a little bit earlier, Mizmor 100, Kuf, and uh, very short. And um, the question is, what's it about? So is it specific to the Korban Toda, the Thanksgiving offering, or not, it's just a Thanksgiving offering unto God. So we'll sort of go through it. And obviously in a certain sense, probably both are true. But um, why don't we start with um, the assumption means more litoda means a song when they brought the toda offering, the korban toda. We actually gave a shear on Parsha Tzav. I spoke on the korban toda. The korban toda is a Thanksgiving offering. And um, it's unique in the sense that you have to eat it within one day as opposed to within two days. Normally, when they're being a korban, a, a korban that you can eat, many korban that you cannot eat, um, a korban ola, nobody eats, a kor, uh, an elevation offering or whatever they call it, uh, a korban chatat, a sin offering, only the, the priest, only the kohanim can eat, korban asham, only the kohanim can eat, uh, korban mincha, only the kohanim can eat. So the only korban that... Uh, quote unquote, non-Kohanim can eat is a shlamim, a peace offering. And there are many forms of peace offerings. The, the Korban Pesach is a, a Korban shlamim. The Korban Toda is a form of a shlamim, but unlike all the other Korban, korban, korban shlamim, it has to be eaten within one day. And we mentioned a number of times, I think our first opening class on the Siddur back in the fall, I quoted the insight I heard from Rabbi, Rabbi Silver of Drisha, why every Siddur begins at Shachrit, um, and not supposed to Mari. The, the Friday night begins at Mari, right? The day begins at night. So why does our sitter begin at Shachrit? And he tied that into this halachic notion, which everybody agrees with, that the day in the temple starts only in the morning, right? The, the day that oh. the day starts at night is only a outside of the temple. It's so unusual. Vayir, vayi boker, you know, whatever. The day starts in the morning. Vayi boker, yom echad. And when the morning comes, it's the next day. So any korban that you bring in the daytime, you have till the following morning to eat it. So that's, uh, you bring a korban on Monday afternoon, you have till Tuesday morning, till sunrise. Then the rabbis added a, 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 a precaution to eat it by midnight. That, that doesn't mean 12 a.m. It means halfway through the night, probably around one o'clock on daylight saving times in most places or whatever. But um, so 
but the Korban Tod has to be eaten only uh, on that day. And that's to, um, you, you don't have the second day to eat it, um, an extra day, because uh, we want to publicize the miracle, Thanksgiving. You, you got into medical school. You're really excited. You want to say thank you. So you want more people to come because if you have to eat, and the Korban Tod was big, a lot. You had to have 40 loaves of bread, which were made of chametz, half of chametz, not of chametz. So you had to invite more people. So we pursue Nisa. That was really the idea of the Korban Toda, to let people know about God's generosity and miracles. And we'll talk about, you know, the classic cases that people assume a Korban Toda, you got sick, were better, got out of jail, um, et cetera. So one interpretation, one way that the, the commentaries look at this Mismor, it's a Mismor Litoda. It was a Mismor said, and that that it seems to be true is it means more said in the Beit Hamidish when somebody brought a Korban Toda. They actually said this. But I just want to show you one amazing idea. We have these ideas that I, I assume the Rambam would consider them heresy, but uh, they go against the way we're often taught. But uh, let me, because, uh, you know, you wouldn't believe, I mean, maybe you would believe me, but uh, let's see it in print and see what it's like. Okay, <clears throat> but the... Uh, Midrash Rabbah has to say about the Korban Chata, the Korban Toda. So the Midrash Rabbah says, just let me find it. Uh, give me one second. Vayikra Rabbah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rabbi Pinchas, Rabbi Levi, Rabbi Yochan. I'm sorry, there is no English translation that I know of. On, I mean, maybe there is somewhere, but on, on Safari, the Vayikra Rabbah is not translated into English. In the future, all sacrifices will be annulled. So I'm sure many of you have maybe have heard concept like this. Uh, people know the Rambam wasn't a big fan, uh, or I don't know, he wasn't a big fan. The Rambam historicized, you know, sacrifices. Yes. Had the Torah been given at a different point in history, we wouldn't have needed any sacrifices. But when, at the time that they were given, the only way to worship God was through the sacrifices. So God could, couldn't uh, so divorce us from our sort of our comfort zone to tell people they can't bring sacrifices. Like I, I wrote an article, I think in the a few months into the pan pandemic, where I quoted, you know, Shimshon Raphael Hirsch's, uh, I don't know, famous, became more famous, the idea that if it was up to him, he would close every show for a hundred years. He thinks Judaism needs a reset. People associate Judaism religiosity with the shul, and that's a big mistake. He'd like to close every shul for 100 years and let people reestablish the basis of Jewish life in the home. That was a pretty radical statement. I assume he was exaggerating a little bit, but I don't know. But anyways, but, the, but he realized that's impossible. You can't tell people to be an observant Jew and not go to shul on, on Shabbat. It's just like the way we worship God is through shul. So the way people worship God in the ancient times is through korbanot. Today, most modern people find that uh uh, they that's not the way they want to worship God. I, uh, I don't think the average person really means it so hard when they dub in for the, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say this, but uh, you know, how many people feel so upset there are no korbanah? We've learned that we can worship God without korbanah, which is what the prophets kind of say. The korbanah are the sort of, you know, when, when everything is going well, that's an addition, but the uh, korbanah are not the be all and end all. And, but nonetheless, all that being said, it's important to note the Rambam that's only in the Morn of Uchim, in his philosophical work. In his halachic work, the Rambam writes, you wouldn't know, Rambam's a very from Jew, and the Rambam writes, in the future, we're going to bring Korbanas. And he has a whole book. The Shulchan Aruch doesn't tell you anything about Korbanas. The Rif doesn't write about Korbanas. Other halachic authorities, because they were not uh, applicable. The Rambam is the only code that wrote about laws that weren't applicable in his time. So the Rambam wrote a comprehensive code of Judaism, the Mishnah Torah, the second Torah. He wanted to in, in, incorporate all of, of Torah. So therefore, he included the, the Korbanot. Uh, you wouldn't know anything from his philosophical view of what Korbanot was. But here you have in, in the Medjish Rabbah that all Korbanot are going to be nullified. The Korban Todai no Batel. However, the, the sacrifice of thanksgiving to say thank you, God, to say hakarat hatov, gratitude, that can never be annulled. By the way, this is the same thing, kola tfilot, all prayer will be annulled. Prayer is sort of parallel. It's not exactly replacement, but complementary to sacrifices. Prayer will be nullified, hadodai no batel. And um, okay, so that's, uh, and the Gemara quotes uh, a proof text to want to say, uh, that um, to only the Korban Toda will survive. So that's a pretty uh, wild idea. 
but um, that in the future the korban toda. So fine. So means more to vote. But when you brought a, a, a korban toda, you want to say thank you. Um, so you would say this means more. That's why, of course, we don't say it on Shabbos and Yontav, because on Shabbat and Yontav you are not allowed to bring a, um, you weren't allowed to bring a a private you know, sacrifice. Communal sacrifices were offered on Shabbat. The korban we had an extra communal sacrifice. The korban Musa, we had four sheep instead of two that we have every day. We have an extra two on the Korban Mosav, but no private Korbanat. And that was the discussion that made Hillel, the, the Nasi, they were unsure about the Korban Pesach. The Korban Pesach sort of in between this public and private. It's uh, everybody does it, but you bring it privately. So the rabbis weren't sure if you could bring Shmayan of Talia, um, um, the, the, the Bnei Batera weren't sure if you brought it on Shabbos. And I uh, guess like then they didn't like Arab Shabbos on Pes uh, Arab Pesach on Shabbos. So it didn't happen for a long time. And then one time when it happened, they didn't know what to do. And Hillel told him, he proved him and he had a, a, a tradition, it is broad and therefore they made him the Nasi. But uh, you can't bring a Korban Toda, so therefore we don't say Mizmor Toda. We also do not say it on um, Arab Pesach. <clears throat> why, why don't we say it on Arab Pesach and all Pesach? Why, why don't we say the Korban Toda then? What are we up against? Chamez, Chamez, good, good. I'm glad everybody's listening because it contains this the only korban besides the pikurim that uh, besides the mincha pikurim on on um uh, the 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 shtei that we brought on shvuz that has has chametz in it. So therefore, you can't do it on Pesach and you can't do it Arab Yom Kippur for a similar reason. Because the korban toda can be eaten for 24 hours till the next day. You no, know, you bring it Arab Yom Kippur. The next day is Yom Kippur, so you can't eat it. We do bring it Erev Tisha B'Av because there is no, no we don't say it Erev Tisha B'Av. There's no Tisha B'Av in the Torah. There's only one fasting in, in the Torah. That's the way we want to go back to. So um, so it wasn't said Erev Yom Kippur because you couldn't eat the Korban Toda for all 24 hours or whatever, even more than 24 hours. You had to eat it. So that's why it wasn't said. Now, uh, <clears throat> what anybody here, any Sfardim here, but I did not know this myself, but apparently the the Sfard, I don't mean Nusach Sfard, I mean Eidot HaMizrach, the real, the real McCoy, the real Sfardim, they do say Mizmer Latoda on, on Pesach. And um, I was noting here in the Nativ Bina that I use a lot, um, the, the Rokeach, the medieval, the medieval, from the medieval period, he said it on Shabbos, he wouldn't say Mizmer Latoda. In other words, he said, Hariu Lashem Kolaretz, we have to thank and sing out to God. He skipped the words, Mizmor Latoda, we can give thanking. And um, El Bogen, in his you know, classic work that we've quoted in the past, the, the German scholar wrote on the history of the liturgy. So he brings the practice of the community in Rome that they would only say it on Shabbat, that Mizmor Latoda was only said on Shabbat. Clearly, this is sort of the second half. And I was saying the Korban Toda, some view it as directly related to the Korban Toda, and some say it's really not related. It means we're give Thanksgiving every day, we give Thanksgiving. And more so on Shabbat. Shabbat, uh, it's a wonderful gift, Shabbat, but thank, we have more time on Shabbat. So that's interesting. I, it's obviously that's not the, I assume that's not the practice anybody here, but if it is, I would, I would love to hear. If anybody has the practice to say it on other days, but that's why the, um, the minag is not <clears throat> to say it on Erev Pesach and uh, on Pesach and Erev Yom Kippur and not on, on Shabbat. We also have a custom, we stand, right? Yeah, you know, it's right, everybody stands for Mishmur Latoda, kind of like a pain, you're sitting and you got to stand. Why do we stand? <coughs> we don't stand for Shema, right? Amida that means to stand, right? You stand for the Amida. Why, why do we stand for Mishmur Latoda? Well, it's so important. Yeah, it's okay, it's very important. Uh, anybody? Okay. No, I'm sorry. When you brought a, when you brought a korban, didn't you stand? Ah, excellent. Debbie, thank you very much. When you brought a korban, you had to stand. Why did you have to stand? Not when you brought a korban. When you entered the Bein you had to stand. Mm -hmm. Right, korban is too. Ein yeshiva v'azarela l'malchi beit avitovat. The only people who were allowed to sit in the in the courtyard, even of the temple, were the malchi beit avit, the kingdom of King David and his descendants, only a king was allowed to sit in the temple. Nobody could stand in the presence of God. You also couldn't wear shoes in the temple, right? The first thing Moshe tells, God tells Moshe when he meets him, like 
That's it. The introduction to Moshe is take off your shoes. Right? He's at this stand. He hears a voice because, and we don't wear shoes on Yom Kippur. We're like all in, we're all Kohani, right? Yom Kippur, we're all translated into, transferred into the temple and we wear a kittel. We're in the temple. We pretend that we're, we're like the angels and uh, we're, we're not you normal human beings on Yom Kippur. So we don't wear shoes. Because uh, shoes, it represents the power of man. We, we discussed them when we did the in Birchad Ashachar, Shasali Kotzar. Shoes represent man's, man's strength. And in the presence of God, man is a nobody. And mourners don't wear shoes for a very, very similar idea. But you weren't allowed to sit in the, the, the Beit HaMikdash. So assuming Mizmor Latoda is connected to this idea um, so then you have to um, you have to stand, and that's of course is our practice. You stand from about the Sanhedrin. Oh. I'm sorry. About the Sanhedrin. What about the Sanhedrin? The Sanhedrin was not situated directly in the Beit Hamikdash. They were next to the, the Beit Hamikdash. Zara, didn't they? Didn't they sit there? They sent the Lishkat Hagazit. I don't. Know. Yeah, it wasn't when you weren't allowed to. Stand. They weren't right by the altar. The Sanhedrin, it's true, the Sanhedrin has to be by the maid of being that's very good. But I they were in a separate room in a separate um, you look, you know, they have to shot many separate areas. I just mean in the area right by um there. Okay, um, um there you couldn't sit, but if you're like, you know, it's like sort of like I'll tell you another halacha that I, I, maybe I shouldn't tell you, but one that everybody ignores, lots of people ignore, and that's um on 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 Simcha's Torah, there there's a big problem on on um because uh, every uh, you know they have the the safer Torah out in the room for like for two hours while they do hakafas. You're not allowed to st to stand to sit when the safer Torah is standing. Um, you have to go to another room. Uh, that's not when the safer. You don't have to stand when the Aron Kodesh is open. That's just a minhag. We have a Rosh Hashanah Kippur. Every time they open the Aron, that's not a real halacha. You don't have to stand for. Uh, the Ela, and you don't have to stand for all the piyutim. It's a minak, it's a nice thing if you can do it. You know, but if the safer Torah is moving, it's out of the ark, then you do have to stand. So the answer is very hard. Who wants to who stand? People are schmoozing. You know, they have to have the you have to have the fast minion for people want quick hakafas. And the hakafas people want to dance, but you can't. Uh, they don't work together. When people don't want to dance, or in the hakafas where people want to dance and they're sitting in the room, it's not really um, appropriate. So you can't stand. You're not supposed to sit. In the presence of uh, Sefer Torah, Kalba Homer, in the presence of God, Mamash, in the Beit Amikdash, you're not allowed to sing. A king has a special status. Of course, the Gemara says, Kama Tipshe Hayinshe. How stupid, Tipshim, a Tipesh, a fool. How foolish people are, the Gemara in Makos. They stand from a Sefer Torah. When a Sefer Torah walks in, everybody, okay, Simcha Torah, you know, two hours, not going to stand. But everybody knows, right? You know, you're, you're sitting there and somebody walks in to take the Sefer Torah roller. Everybody jumps out of their seat as they should, right? But uh, how foolish are people? They stand for the Sefer Torah, but they don't stand when a Torah scholar walks into the room. Uh, Sefer Torah, it's letters and parchment, no big deal. The real Sefer Torah, the real Sefer Torah is on, um, is a living Sefer Torah that you have to stand. So that's a fascinating Mar. As much as you have to honor the Torah scholar more than the Torah itself, but we have to honor the Torah itself. Somebody just asked me, me privately if I could repeat why we don't say Mismar Latod on, sh on Shabbat very quickly because we do not bring personal personal sacrifices on Shabbat. The Korban Torah, you brought to offer Thanksgiving. So we, we're not allowed to do that on Shabbat. So we don't say Mismar Latod. But, but we do stand, but again, we're, okay, so we're comparing it to the, um, to um, the Korban Toda. So I just wanted to, now who has to bring a Korban Toda? It's very nice, Korban Toda. Who, who has to bring it? People, the four people uh, that it says who had to- uh, Right, the four people, yes. Yeah, so that's uh, what I want to point out, May. Uh, I, I, okay, and who are these four people have to bring a Korban Toda? Across the sea, uh, out of jail. Right, uh, okay, uh, very good. So let's take a look. Umara Brachot 50 This I should have in English. Uh, let me find it now. Okay, too many things. 54B, Brachlet. Here we go. Okay. Uh, the Gemara. I'm Rav Yudha, I'm a Rav. Rav Yudha is a, a second generation Amora in Pavel, third century. The name of Rav, the founder of the Yeshiva in, in Sura, the great, the founder of Torah really in Babylonia. Arbat Srichim Lahodot, four people have to give thank you, say, give praise or thanks. Yordei Hayam, those who go to the sea, who go on a 
cruise. I don't think it meant the cruise. I didn't mean a cruise. They crossed, uh, they had to travel for business. It wasn't so simple in those days, not a five-star cruise. Hoche mi barot, people who had to be in, in the desert. Misha yacholev in who was sick and got better. And somebody, chavush bevet hasarim, he was um, in jail and he was released. And then the Gemara um, quotes, we'll maybe take a look at that in a, in a few minutes. All these come from Mizmor 107. The Healing 107 that Rabbi Liebtag gave a shear on, a few, I think before Yamat Smooth, not long ago, he gave a whole shear showing why Mizmor Latoda, why that Mizmor was chosen here. Now, what doesn't the Gemara say? What's missing in, in this Gemara? It's nice, four people have to give thanks. What, what's missing? How you give thanks? Excellent. How you give thanks. Nowhere does the Gemara said you have to bring a korban toda. Rashi doesn't say it. It could be I was looking. I was looking around, and they, and the, I can't say I did a one hundred percent comprehensive search. Um, I, there, there's nothing wrong. Uh, it's nothing. But the because um, when the I'll tell you what I think the real end. If you look, okay. So the Gemara they have to give thanks. How you give thanks? There are many ways to give thanks. Today we use the birchat hagoma, but you can give. Give stakas thanks. You can do all kinds of things. Uh, you can go pray. You can, uh, yes. And so in the time of the Beit HaMikdash, it made a lot of sense. You would bring the korban. But the Gemara doesn't directly say that someone who went on a sea journey and, you know, it was it was dangerous, had, has to uh, bring a korban to that. Why not? Is what I think. Why, why not? Because the idea of a forced korban toda is like, I would say, an oxymoron. You're going to force somebody to say thank you. It's like when we force people to, to apologize, you know. They're, they're meaningless. I mean, politicians do it all the time. You know, they, they make a mistake. To, they, they, you know, when, when you have to drag an apology and then, and then say, well, if we offended you, we're sorry. Like, and if we didn't, like, you know, it's almost meaningless. The idea of a forced korban. And if you look in the Torah, in Parsha, uh, the seventh chapter in Vayikra. Let me see if I put it up here. Otherwise, we can look for it. I'm pretty sure, I mean, that's the main place the Korban Torah talks about the Korbanot, Korban Toda, nothing. It says, uh, here, let me just do it quickly. I'll show you. Vayikra, chapter seven. Okay, here we go. The, the Chabad pops up first. Okay, we say that. Um, these are the laws of the shlamim. Korban Toda is a shlamim. I said, if if you bring a korban, the Torah never tells you. It's not in Vayikra either. Not in Vayikra itself. The Torah never tells you when you have to bring a korban Toda. You bring a korban Toda when you should bring a korban Toda. But that's up to you. You can't force a Thanksgiving. So Arba Tzrichim Lahodot, four have to give thanks. So of course the Talmud's saying that, but doesn't necessarily mean, and I do believe it's um, um, a makloket, doesn't necessarily have to say a, um, a korban Toda. And what's interesting is, of course, and I'll show this to, to, to you quickly now, is the, the proof that these four people don't come from this means, this means more is, is too short. It's too too much of a, a generic mizmor to that. The proof comes from Tilim 107. So in other words, Arba Tzrichim Lodo, and they bring Tilim 107, not, not mizmor to that. So let's just take a very quick look. Rabbi Liebtag, if you want to get the longer version, uh, spoke about this mizmor at great length a while back. But let's just take a quick look. Uh, Psalm 107. So you, it's, uh, it's basically, so we start at the beginning. Um, that comes up more than one place, right? They're wandering in the desert, and uh, and we cry out to God, and God then saves us. He takes us on the straight path, and so we have to give thanksgiving to God for taking us out of the, the desert. Same thing, um, people are sitting in the darkness, we're in jail. We, we crawl out to God. God takes us out. Okay. Yodu Lashem Chastok. Therefore, give thanks to God. Then the Gemara continues. Uh, where we go? Um, 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 it's a simple way. Okay. Yishlach Farovi, your fame. People who were sick. Yodu Lashem Chasto. So the Mizmor goes through each of these four. Yordeha Ambaniot. People go down in the sea. 
Osei Melachot, and uh, it was dangerous, and there was a Ruach Sarah, you know, the Ruach could turn the winds and the water, Yalusha Maim, right? And then, by Yisaku Hashem, we cried out to God, and God makes it the Mama, the Sarah, the, the, the tidal waves, they stop, they come very quiet, Mama, called the Mama Taka, very quiet voice. They were quiet, you know, they, they stopped. So there is no real connection between Mizmor Latoda and Arba Tzrichim Lahotot. It's the connection is to Mizmor Kupsai. Now, obviously, these two Mizmorim are, are, are connected in some way. But I just want to point there because everybody just assumes that, and it's not even that it isn't true. Often it's it's the way the Gemara expresses things, the way the Torah expresses things. Like I, I think I discussed it last week or two weeks ago, im kesef talva, right? If you give, you know, charity. Uh, the, the, that's not, and that's one of the places where all the Gemara says, if doesn't mean, if it means you're obligated to. But the Torah didn't write it. You, you shouldn't give charity because you're obligated. You didn't want to. So the fact, in other words, the, the, the Torah purposely wrote it in these ways. The, the Torah purposely wrote, if you happen to bring a, a Korban Toda, these are the laws. But obviously, there are times you should bring a Korban Toda, but the Torah doesn't, doesn't, can't force you to say Thanksgiving. Okay, so that's, um, that's, um, that Gemara there. Okay, now, so let's go, um, let's go through the Mizmor itself, because that we haven't done. Okay, does everybody have um, a sitter? I think it's easier. I prefer not to share my screen for this. Everybody can just pull it out. It's, it's very short. Mizmor Lutoda, um, okay, a song Thanksgiving. So by the way, most, like if you look in, the, in this, this new book I got from, um, I think Sandra Wilkes is online. I think her family, her family sponsored it. Um, the Wogelmuth, Rabbi Wogelmuth, who I never met, who was, uh, I believe, got smich at the Hildesheim Rabbinical Seminary in Germany, German, you know, the classic German Orthodox rabbi. And he taught for many, many years in Maimonides. And he taught a course on tefillah. I think people who live in Boston went to Maimonides can tell me more about it. Rav Soloveitchik, I think, was involved or very much encouraged him. And uh, I think when in his later Rav years... Rav Soloveitchik was the one who gave him the mandate to do that. Right. He said That's he, what I was... He, thank he you. To. Correct. Yes, yes. And then I read in the introduction, I got the, the, the book now, you know, I was teaching the course that he wasn't well, he was, uh, he, he lived to be in his, his, his 90s, but, and uh, so he dictated basically the book and they, they put out the book and um, now, so uh, he quotes there also, I mean, he's not the only one to quote it, but I, that um, Mismar Latoda is for all the miracles, the way they put it is that all the miracles that happen to us every day. Now, basically what they're saying is a nation, the star, like, and there was all the goodness that God, that we're not even aware of it. That's human nature. First of all, we often don't know. We don't know things that don't happen, you know, like, uh, and then when they say like a, a near miss on the airplane, it's not a near miss, it's a miss. You don't want to be in a near miss. If it nearly misses, that means it hit. You want to break when, so you, you don't even know, people don't even know often how close they come to, to danger, which is sort of the, the arbitrary are people whose lives were in danger. I mean, right, it's not like, I say, it's, it's not a, a five-star cruise and you say, bring a current thought. It was, it was dangerous to travel. It was dangerous to go in a desert. You got sick and being in jail, who knows if you ever got out. So those were very dangerous things. That's why there's a big question today. Do you have to bench Goma even if assuming the Korban Toda and benching Goma go together, sort of. <coughs> so you have to bench Goma when you fly to Israel. And, uh, you know, but the flying, flying is the safest form of, uh, you go over the sea and you, you, what do you, so you go over the desert and the sea, and many people feel no, many people today, I think it used to be people did, but it's, it's more and more common. Rav Soloveitchik apparently felt when he first came from, from Boston to New York every week, he used to say, Tfilera Derek, Benjamin Gomel, I don't Benjamin Gomel, Tfilera Derek, he said, and then I think he stopped. So you say Tfilera Derek, when you feel you're going on, on a journey, the Gemara says, call it Rahim, when you go on a journey, there's more more danger. But uh, today, people go on journeys every day to work. They travel, uh, you know, 50 miles to work, and they go on the highways every day, back and forth. So, uh, so lots of people don't feel it. So it, it's a whole, it's a different thing. It's not, Takmar should not be understood in a literal sense. But but uh, Rabbi Wogamu with another point out, Mizmar Latoda, there's so many things that go on in our life, we don't even know about it. So that's what the real Mizmar Latoda. It's not a contradiction that it's referring to, the Korban Toda, but it's really a song of thanksgiving for everything that happens. Okay, <clears throat> so let, let's go through it. It's not long. Hariu Lashem Kola Aretz. It's a beautiful verse. Um, Hariu, uh, even, I don't know, how does your Sidurim, I have only Hebrew because I'm, I'm traveling, so I only brought a little small, small sitter. 
Um, how does your seed learn translate? How are you sing? Shout, uh, song? shout joyously to the Lord. Shout joyously to God. Okay. From the word trua, right? <clears throat> okay. Shout joyously. Okay. Any other translations? What's that? Koran, art scroll? Yes, Koran sex. Koran, and how does art scroll, scroll translate? Call out. Call, call out. out. Okay. Without the joy. Or with call out. No, 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 no. Just call I'm out sorry? to Hashem, everyone else. That's very interesting. You see, right there. Corin says joyously call out, and Art Scroll doesn't put the word joy. Very because the word there isn't Hari Lashem. Does does that is Hari a call of joy? Is or Hari calling out? Let's say on Rosh Hashanah, it's clearly connected to a trua, right? Trua means we call out to God in in prayer, right? Uh, so yes. I, I just find right there you've got a very interesting uh, thank you very much. Interesting debate between art scroll and Corin what the word hariu means. Of course, it, but you know, it's because nothing can be translated. That's I gotta know Hebrew. Hariu la Shem kol aretz. Sing out, sing out, uh, joy, enjoy, whatever. Singing and joy go together, of course. You can't really sing if you're not joyous. Maybe we'll come back to that later. Um, so hariu la Shem kol aretz. So the, um, <coughs> the, the, now who's kol aretz? How would you translate kol aretz? All the earth, excuse Everyone on earth. Everyone on earth. Okay. Yes. Right. Is that what it says? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know. I translated is the earth. Call oh. her The entire um, earth. You know, yeah. I am blown yeah. away. My and my son, who's doing a PhD in physics, I started asking him. I didn't understand. He was trying to explain to me a, a little bit. The Webb, uh, what's it called? The James Webb's telescope. This is like Unbelievable. We're looking back four and a half billion years, right? Isn't that worth the telescope? I mean, that star could have disappeared four billion years ago, and we're not going to know for another four, you know, half a billion years. Like it's it's unbelievable that uh what they can do, the vastness of the of the universe, the stars. See so, you now we have so much in our Tilim accounting the stars. I mean, God's promised Avram, look up to the stars. I I, I don't think. Of, yes, it means, again, the Torah could have written kola adam, kolish, whatever, it could have written, it didn't write that. It wrote kola aretz, nature sings to God. In other words, nature song, this, this songs of the beautiful sounds of nature. Hariu Hashem kola aretz. Yes, but, well, hold on, I, I, how do arts scroll and Koran translate kola aretz? Let's go there. Anybody a beer bomb sitter, like the old, all the old, you know, nobody uses the beer bomb anymore. Or the solo, the solo pool. That's like uh, you need a chiasameti for for that. <laughs> right, uh, you know. But uh, anybody, you know, I grew up on the beer bomb sitter. Anybody, anybody still have the beer bomb sitter? We used to use this beer bomb in the, at at, at Beit <clears throat> Very nice. Okay, nice to hear that. Uh, okay, Philip beer bomb. He did a lot of good work. But yes. um, okay, so how how do they translate kol aretz? I'm I'm just curious. Everyone on earth is everyone on earth, right? So I have a beer and bomb. I can go and get a beer and bomb. Oh, uh, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, if you want, that's fine. But uh, thank you. So, right. So, I just think it's really again, it's the idea, and of course, it's through nature we come to recognize God. That's one of the common ways to recognize the Rambam. Really begins the the Mishnah Torah like that to to study when the Rambam talks about studying the. The, the Galgalim and the astronomy and how the stars work, that's to appreciate God th th through nature. Yes. So nature sings out to God. Ariel Hashem kol aretz. Of course, we have to learn from nature, but I think that's a beautiful thing. It's it's a very natural um, song. Okay, Mizmar to Ariel Hashem kol aretz. Now, the, the Malbim, the Malbim, um, Malbim, Malbim died in, uh, when did he die? Uh, 1880s? I'm trying to think now. The Malbim was. Uh, I mean, the, anybody look at the Malbim ever? Like, is he, is he popular with with people? Mayor, what's his name? Mayor Labish. I forget now. I should know this. Mayor, I forget. Ben Yechiel Moshe or something. The the, the Malbim is a uh, Rashi Teva for his name. I just unfortunately I, I forget offhand. Malbim Mayor something uh, Ben uh, yes, uh, whatever. But the the Malbim was uh, I think lived mainly in in in, in Romania. But I'll, uh, he wrote a commentary on 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 Chumash where he goes through uh, word by word, like very you know, um, why what is the difference between Sasun and Simcha? What's the difference? Like all the he always did things like that, and he he asked sort of like the a Barbanel, but much shorter. He asked 
you know, questions and he gives answers. <coughs> it's a modern comic here, 19th century. He was offered the job. I'm trying to think why he didn't take the job. Now I have to look this up again. He was offered the job to become the first chief rabbi of New York. Uh, you know, New York once had a, a chief rabbi once and never again, because that was a disaster. Sha'in Kamohu, Rav Yaakov Yosef, RJJ, Rav Yaakov Yosef, was brought, he was the Magid in, in Vilna, was brought to um, New York in 18, oh boy, I forget, maybe 1892, no, 1882. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't remember offhand. And uh, the Malbi Med, I think, was offered a job. And I'm not sure if he didn't take a job because he died in the interim or not. I, d I don't remember. But anyways, that's uh, just a total aside. But the, uh, the Malbi who really wrote a fascinating Perushim on Chumash and all of Tanakh, he says like this, he says, what does it mean? So he says like this, he says, normally um, God works through agencies, right? God, uh, you know, God doesn't get so involved in history. God, I remember Rav Shachter used to tell us, God is an El Mistater. God is a hidden God. God is, you know, and we talk about Hester Panim. That's, that's a, a terrible thing. That means God is hidden and is really uninvolved in the world. Hester Panim is a, a, a big curse. But even when there's not Hester Panim, obviously God is hidden. He's never said this. I remember Rav Shech would sometimes say, he's so hidden, he, most people can't find him. Most people don't think he, he, he exists. Lots of because God is not obvious. It's very easy to explain through you know, the web telescope. Wow, you know, it's very, some people will be inspired to say, Ma Rabu Masach Hashem, and some people will be inspired or um, would say, wow, science is, you know, what's God? It's, it's all about science, the amazing things of, of, of science. <clears throat> so God works through agency. But um, when there's a miracle, that's when God comes. Haril Hashem Kolar, this is for um, miraculous events. That's how he's understanding it. And that's um, when God is directly involved, like in Egypt, the Yad Chazaka, God, you know, everybody's going to know. That was the purpose of the Makkah was for the Egyptians and the Jews to know that there's a God. So that's going, that's really what we call the difference between a nice nigla and a nice nistar, a hidden miracle and an obvious miracle. We believe the sun rising, the sun doesn't really rise, the, the earth rotating, but uh, okay. The, the sun rising every morning is a miracle. Of course, none of us view that as a miracle because it's natural, it happens every day, but that's why we say it in our our our, our tefillot. We talk about, about nature. The first bracha, Yotzer Hamorot, the law big Hamayer Laaretz, Ol Darim Lev Barachamim, the Vom Achadish, the Chol Yom Tamid Masav Rishit. Every day, God renews creation. We have a whole bracha. We don't pay attention. Hopefully, in a, within I don't know a few months, a few years, we'll get there. It's not so far away, actually. Hamayer um, Laaretz. So we talk Rabbi, about yes. Just so you know, the the uh, Sim Shalom translated as claim the the Lord all the earth. Uh -huh. so they, uh -huh. they find yours and the Hertz Sidur from many, many years ago says, uh, shout out for joy unto the Lord, all ye lands. All ye lands. So, right. So both, you know what? Those are the more traditional. I think they're more, both, both of those, the, the Sim Shalom is a conservative, you know, you know, sitter, I believe. And yeah. the, her, this is, is Hertz, I don't think, it's not Hertz. Hertz never did. Uh, oh yeah, Hertz. Hertz. Hertz, Hertz, like as in, and the chief rabbi of England, yeah. like in yeah. the Hertz Chumash, I didn't know he did the, a sitter. Wow. The Hertz yeah. Chumash, I know about that. I didn't know there was a Hertz sitter. Wow. I, I always Hertz. think the Hertz sitter, I, I, the, the Hertz Chumash to me is always, it's a reflection of how American, North American Jewish life has changed. When I was a kid growing up um, in the 70s, uh, and so every um, shul in the world used the Hertz Chumash. In right. the Reform Shul, the Conservative Shul, and the Orthodox Shul, I use the Hertz Chumash. Unbelievable. Can you imagine writing a Chumash that was, was modern enough and scholarly enough to uh, that Reform could use it? And he addresses biblical criticism and comments in the back and some stuff is really good. But, you know, people today read it. They can't take it. He quotes non-Jews people. It has yes. an apologetic flavor. He's a driver, all these non-Jewish Bible scholars to prove yes. the Bible is correct. But I'm sure people of a certain age, no matter what shul you have in, in, I don't know, in, in the Satmar Shtibul, but to any uh, regular shul in the world, use the Hertz Chumash. And today, nobody uses the Hertz Chumash. It's like, oh my gosh. And uh, and uh, today, there's the Art Scroll or the Koran, whatever, for Orthodox and the 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 Plout uh, for the Reform. Here, the Chumash, and the, I forget the Conservative Chumash, what it's called. The words are the same. It's the, way. All, all, the Reform Orthodox, Baruch Hashem. The, the conservative one is Eitz Chayim. I'm sorry? The Conservative one is Eitz Chayim. 
right, Eschheim, it's the red cover. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so that, um, um, so the, at least the words of the Chumash are the same. The reform hasn't changed any of the words of the Chumash. They just say, may differ on how it was put together, who wrote it. But the words, we all agree, more or less. Anyways, that's just a comment. But, in, but I think that, that Hertz and Birnbaum are, are much more faithful. I, really I, I don't know if that represents this, you know, sort of a different time period where people have that today. We, I don't know, people, whatever. For whatever reason, the more modern translations are all the people. All the people should sing. Okay. Worship God with joy. Okay, what does that mean? So, uh, I mean, it means what it means. It means uh, you have to worship. Worshiping God is very, very joyous, right? You should love to do mitzvot. You know, Rav, Rav Moshe said one of, of the great tragedies of American Jewish life is I, I wasn't that they were wrong. I mean, uh, you know, the people came from Europe. I don't know Yiddish shit. Just design a yid. You can say it a lot better than I can. It's very difficult to be a Jew. So yeah, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein apparently said once, you know, of course. So why would kids want to be, be Jewish? <laughs> the people don't like it. The chart. Shver divine a jin. I'll, I'll assimilate to America. You say it's beautiful. It's joyous. It's so exciting. It's so wonderful. It's so beautiful to be Jewish. Eve to the Shem It should dance. The Hasidic movement, that's really what the Hasidic movement did. The, um, the Misnagdim were very ascetic. They used to fast all the time. We mentioned that last week or, or, or two weeks ago, the increase in fast days. Yeah, last week we spoke about the fast day for the Friday, Persia, you know, you know, you know, yeah. What did the Hasidim took a Yortzeit in the Shulchan Aruch and says there's a Minak, it's not Allah, that's a Minak to fast on a Yortzeit. Anybody here fast ever on a Yortzeit? And the Hasidim, uh, anybody here not make a yes. Kiddush ever on a Yortzeit? Yes. No, yes, yes. Yes, you about. fasted, Rabbi Alman. You both fasted and made a kiddush. No, no, fasted and didn't make a kiddush. Oh, fasted and didn't make a kiddush. Okay, okay, right. So I, you could fast one, and make kiddush for a on on different days. No, it's just interesting. The Hasim totally changed it. How could they do that? Well, whatever. It's just very fascinating. But the idea. Of the See, my mother was very nice. She was nifter on Rosh Chodesh. Ah, uh -huh, so you couldn't, you didn't have to but fast. My mother said I can't fast. My father's right, said I can't fast when, unless it's Shabbos. Yeah, so no, I, I've never fasted. On I've never fasted on a Yorze. Tov, I assume you haven't fasted either. Never fasted on a Yorze. What can, I'm, I'm aware of the Minag, of, of course. It's in the Shulchan Aruch. It's not Stama Minag. It's, I mean, it's, a, it's Stama Minag, but it's a Minag in the Shulchan Aruch. Like, uh, whatever. But I remember once David Berger, Professor David Berger came when we were doing live programs in Toronto many years ago. He, he was speaking on, on a Sunday morning in Toronto. And he, at the beginning of his lecture, he said that I may take a drink in the middle. It's he has, has your site today. And he has a minute to fast till Chatzot on the yurt site. So after Chatzot, in the middle of his talk was going to be Chatzot, he was going to take a drink of water. It's the first time I sort of, you know, it just announced. But um, anyways, we have to worship God with joy and happiness. Now, it's not just that's what we should do. And that's wonderful. It, one who doesn't means, I mean, how can you not worship God in joy? In other words, there's no such thing as worshiping God, God if you're not happy. Then there's something wrong in, in the worship. In other words, it's not just the way, proper way to worship is with joy. I'm saying more than that. If you don't have joy, it means there's something wrong in the worship. Because as Rav Soloveitchik, and we've mentioned many times, the definition of simcha in Judaism is being in the presence of God. Usmachtem lifnei Hashem. You should rejoice before God for seven days. That's why the Lulav and Etrog in the temple, in the Beit HaMikdash, right? That's why the, um, the uh, Yontif breaks Avelis, right? There's no, when Yontif comes, Avelis over why? It's connected to the Beit HaMikdash, the presence of God. Yontif, there's a halacha to go to the Beit HaMikdash, right? We go to the temple. Go to the temple, you're in the presence of God, there's only joy. And you can't have mourning in the presence of, there cannot be mourning on a Yontif, a day of joy. It's very hard, obviously, on the person level when this happens, you know, where Yontif, somebody dies and whatever, that's a, but, but, but philosophically, Judaism, the notion of Yontif is one of Simcha, and Simcha has to be, be connected <clears throat> only to, uh, to, uh, to, in other words, being in the presence of God has to be connected to simcha, to, to joy. So that's that's the idosh um, simcha means you're not properly worshiping God. Uh, that's why on on Tisha B'av um, we say satam tefilati. You, you we can't even daven on Tisha B'av. We daven. We say words, but uh, we do that a lot. But satam tefilati. It's I mean, like God has closed. 
Listom, he's closed our our prayers, um, our tilot, our prayers. Um, everything okay? Okay. There's somebody walked into a hotel room here. Okay. Um, so um Satam Tvilati, he um God, we can't pray. And a day of mourning, you can't approach God. It, it, there's a disconnect between God and the Jewish people. So either Hashem is simple as a description. If you're going to be Oved and Hashem, that by definition is simple. It's very sad that people feel sometimes an obligation to worship God. Again, it's the same thing, giving stock, uh, you know, giving a, a carbanto that's not supposed to come because you have to do it. It should be the natural reaction. It should be the natural way. So either Hashem is simple, Bo lefanav, birnana. How do they translate the difference between simcha and, and rina? Joy and uh, jubilation. Rina is jubilation. So what's the difference between joy and, and jubilation? Can somebody explain to me? Because I don't know what the difference is. What's joy? I, I, I really, what's, what's the difference between joy and jubilation? Jubilation is stronger, I think. Jubilation is stronger. I don't know. So I'll tell you what the, the Malbim says. I don't know. The, 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 the Malbim says that, that Simcha is sort of a more you know, stable, ongoing. The state of being we're always supposed to be in. Because when do we worship God? 24-7. 365, 24-7. We're always worshiping God. Uh, some, sometimes we worship God in shul, in the temple. But we can worship God while we eat, while we play sports, while we go on a trip to Portugal, go into Jewish history, whatever, read any, anything you do, you can, is a, a mechanism in the business world though you conduct your business honestly, faithfully, you give people employment. All, everything we do is of it Hashem. I've mentioned that many for it. I've mentioned this many times. It's very tragic when we disconnect our secular life. We don't believe in secular. Rav Shach would also tell us that all the time. There's no thing as secular. In Judaism, there are levels of kedusha. There's kodesh kodeshim. Obviously, the level Yom Kippur is a higher level of kedusha than a, you know a, a Thursday afternoon. But Thursday afternoon also is an opportunity, or Friday morning. Friday morning, we know it's Arab Shabbos, but the, even <laughs> Thursday, it's an opportunity to you know to always be a Hashem. So simcha is sort of the state of being that a Jew should always be in. Joy, it's continuous joy. Um, Rina, Renana is like, wow, a burst, maybe jubilation. Something really exciting happened. The Yankees won the World Series. No, that's a bad example. Okay, the Blue Jays won the World Series. I never, I never told you the, the, the story. I hope my son won't mind. I, I've told it be, before, but many, many years ago, so an aside, if you don't want to listen, you don't have to pay attention. But uh, one minute aside, a number of years ago, I give like a, give a share on Shabbos afternoon. Uh, this must have been a good six, seven years ago and uh, five, six years, whatever. So I mentioned something about, um, oh, I mentioned how Rabbi Scheinberg said that when 1969, when the Mets won the World Series, he was very excited. But by 1986, when the Mets won the World Series, he didn't care anymore. And he was very proud of himself. In other words, Nebuch, when I was just a younger Rob, you know, I cared about sports, so I got excited when the Mets. But by 1986, when the Mets, those who know this stuff, Bill Buckner, the air for space, whatever. So in 1986, he was very excited. He wasn't excited. So, so I said, I'm not on such a level. And if uh, if the Mets won the World Series, I, I would get excited. And then I said, no, not if the Mets won the World Series. If the Blue Jays won the World Series, then I would still get excited. So my son, who was like, like 10 or 11, was sitting in the room this year. And he said, if the Blue Jays won the World Series, I would paint our house blue. Now, good thing my, my wife wasn't sitting there. And uh, it's okay, the Blue Jays haven't won the World Series since, so you don't have to worry. And very interesting, sitting at that chair, I did not know this, was a friend of a regular chemist this year, brought a friend. This friend was the director of marketing for the Toronto Blue Jays. And they, after Shabbos, they sent us an email and they said, wow, we're so impressed. Here are four tickets to an upcoming Blue Jay game. And they gave, so I told my son, next week, I'm gonna talk about cars and say, you know, if we get something, what car you want to have. But anyway, so that's a story. Okay, why, why are we talking about that? Being excited, that's Renana. So, okay, it can be a little excited at the Blue. If the Toronto Maple Leafs won the World uh, Stanley Cup, that would be a nice me clap, not a nice me star. Those who live in Toronto know exactly what I mean. Anyways, but you no, know, you're really excited. Baruch Hashem, listen, the real excitement, you're learning Torah. That's the most exciting thing. It's so beautiful, so wonderful. You're doing mitzvah. But you get into medical school, that's Rina. You, you know, you win, a, you win the lottery. You know, you got a job. You really want you got um, a promotion. These are all wonderful things. That's exactly what you were bringing a korban todah. 
right? Getting a rate, getting a promotion at work is wonderful. If, I mean, if you know, if, uh, as long as that allows you to do more kiddush Hashem, to to have more uh, wonderful things to do. So that's the difference between Rina, um, Rina, and and Simcha. Simcha is sort of our constant state, or it should be in Rina as these spontaneous moments of joy. Okay, let's uh, let's finish up. We have a, a, few, a few minutes. I'd like to finish. Kelman. Yes. Yeah, I looked up online the Birnbaum sitter. Uh huh. So he says here the difference between Simcha and Renana. So the first is joy, and the second is singing. Yes, and a few of the commentaries okay. say joyous song. So Simcha is not with song. singing. No, oh, right. Rina. Right, Rina. Rina. Yeah, Rina is more song, right? Right, but that was simple. Yeah, Rina has the notion of song, because it's Co Co Rina. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear that. Okay, listen, I, 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 great. It's not like uh, either or. It's but listen, they are synonymous. To heal him is all things a song, right? Poetry. It's po poets. <clears throat> we write the same things in many different ways. They don't have to be so distinct. Right, I mean, the Mephorshim like to look for distinctions. Right, remember, it's also David Amelov. It's not God. I mean, you know, it's uh, but so, but even in the Torah, we often for its literary license. That's that's beautiful. That's what great literature does. It says the same thing in different ways. But okay, that's into Rina's being a song. Okay, for for sure to sing. The Levim sang a song right every day. Shir right? We had to sing. Of course, we sing with joy. Right? I, I get very upset when I even on a Wednesday morning. I go to shul and hollow, uh, they they don't sing anything, you know. That we have everybody's in a hurry. So thank God I dub in in, in uh, a school every day. So in schools they sing for hollow even on a Wednesday morning. But I don't I don't like it on Sunday morning. My minion rush goes Sunday morning. What's everybody in a hurry for? Sing a little bit. Sing hodu lashem ki top ki olam pesto. We have to run through. Hollow means to sing. I mean it means to praise, but we praise through song, right? Hundred percent. Okay, good. The <clears throat> ooh no ki Hashem hu Elohim. Who was son of Eloah but somewhere told. Go know that God made us. Who was son of Eloah Now this is unbelievable. How do you translate Eloah We are His. We are His. Where are His? So anybody have a Tanakh open? Gonna, <clears throat> let's see. Um, I'll let me do this for you because it's rather astounding. Most people are, I'm sure some of you are not aware of this. Maybe you are aware of this. But the Kriuxiv? Yeah, the Kriuxiv, exactly. The Kriuxiv, why am I can't move this? Okay, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, hold on, let me try. The Kriuxiv, yeah, I can't. Okay, for, for, forget, I don't know what happened there. Um, in, in, it's written with an, uh, with an Aleph. Uh, here we go. Uh, oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Okay, give me one second. Where are we here? Okay, it's written Lo Anachnu in Tanakh. It's written not with a Vav, but with an Aleph. Oh, it means the opposite. Yeah, it's the exact opposite. Isn't that cool? We have a it lot hurts, of hurts. It's the same okay. way. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Now, so they write it here in in uh, in Sepharia, they put the low with an aleph in brackets, and they and the round brackets and the low in the square brackets. The, the, the square bracket means it's not in the text usually, right? Below enough. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa! What's going on here? Unbelievable, right? So, um, so yeah, there are two ways to mean it. I mean, it's it's really do ki Hashem. You should know that God is Hashem who Elohim. Who was Sanu? He made us below an Achnu, and we're, we we sort of have a special with low, like to him, to him. We are the special nation. Amo, but son Marito. Wow, we're thanking God. God created man. He made a special covenant with the, the Jewish people, and like a, a shepherd for the sheep. God, but son Marito. God watches over. So we're so thankful that we have this unique bond that God cares so much um, ab, ab, about us. So what's below an Achnu with an Aleph? God made us. We didn't make ourselves. You think you, they make a web thing to look at I don't know, web thing, James Webb. I, I asked my son who James Webb was. We were having a discussion at the supper. I said, I said, I can't believe he's a philanthropist. Maybe in a Jewish organization, I wouldn't say that. I said, I, I can't believe it. He must be a scientist, but I never heard of him. So if anybody know, by the way, I asked my son, he knew. All right, he looked it up. 
So James Woods was the head of NASA in, in the 60s for eight or nine years. So they named this for him. But anyway, so but man, because we're so amazing, we, we have done so much, the more we do, that's always the fear. So <clears throat> the Mizmor, it's low and low. It's the opposite. Both are true. The low and achnu. Don't take credit. Give thanks to God. Bring yes. the Korban Toda. Give thanks. The low and achnu. It's not us. Yes, we, we partner with God. We've got to do our share. But I think it's such a beautiful thing, the low and the low. And I don't know why in the sitter they don't, don't ever like print it like that. They only print the low with the vav in the sitter. It's you have to look really hurts you do or they do print it with the art. It hurts. They all style. Coroner Art Scroll, I bet you don't have it. I'd be shocked it's with Coroner Art Scroll. No, Art Scroll doesn't have it. Right. Yeah, it's that because that's too radical. You know, it sounds like it'll confuse people, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The old traditional student were, were more scholar. I don't know what to say. <clears throat> but I'm I'm glad to hear that the Hertz has it. Okay. I'm over to to Bo Shara Bitoda. I was hoping we'd finish it, it today. I don't know. We, maybe we have to leave one bit for next week uh, or two weeks. Okay. Bo Shara Bitoda, come into God's gates with um with um Thanksgiving. So again, if it's the Korban Toda, because of all that God created us and he did his miracles for us and he save us from the sea or whatever. So we have to enter the gates because God is doing this, Bo Sharab. Therefore, there's an obligation to go to the temple gates with a korban todat. That's the korban todat, the way to explain it. If you're just explaining that, it's just Thanksgiving as a general rule. So it means come, we, we give thanks. And how, how do we give thanks to God? We come into his gates, the toda with Thanksgiving, we, we again, the chatzetrot. Here we're singing with instruments, right? The Gemara has a debate What's the highest form of singing? Singing by song or with instruments? The Levim on Shabbos, right? The musical, the Levim, the, the singing with the voice or singing with the musical instrument? We, musical instruments have more, wow, it's more powerful. But what represents our greater, you know, avoda to Hashem? But here, the Chatzot, oh, I'm sorry, I, I told, Chatzot right here is not the Chatzot right. I was confusing. Chatzot, come into God's courtyard, the Tehila, but it means with song. I was, you know, uh, but we always with song, with instruments, without. Give thanks to God. <coughs> now, so the parak ends. So we said before Hashem Hu Elohim. We say this on Yom Kippur seven times. Right? Hashem Hu Elohim. That's how we end Yom, Yom Kippur, right? Hashem Hu Elohim seven times. What, what does it mean, Hashem Hu Elohim? The Lord is our God. The Lord is our God, right? I, again, I don't know how art school and corn, how they all translate the difference between. Is it the Lord is our God? Is that how they normally translate Hashem Hu Elohim? You can let me know. But I think what it means, Hashem is always this God of mercy. And Elohim is the God of justice. Elohim is the God of nature, of, of creation. Therefore, the world, natural world, God created the world of justice. Hashem Hu Elohim, the same God who does great um, kindness is also the God of of justice. And sometimes kindness is through justice. Sometimes when God is harsh or not, so things are, are difficult, it's uh, quote, or even a punishment, uh, a smart punishment is educational. It's to our it's, it's not to punish for the sake of punish, to say to punish to grow. So Hashem Hu Elohim, God in his by being Elohim, the God can manifest kindness, chesed, Hashem through being Elohim. That's, I think, what we can understand it. I don't think that's the way they, they would normally translate it. But uh, Hashem Hu Elohim, but you know, because it's two different names of God representing two different ideas. So you have this at the end. Kitov Hashem Lo Chasto. God is good. Lo Olam Chasto. Those are all the things that God, we, we know God does for us or things we don't think like Bar Hashem going well, the chesed, the wonderful things that happen. Kitov Hashem Lo We have to give thanksgiving to God. But Dor Vador Emunah But for every generation, Faith, be'emuna. What's be'emuna? I mean, what, what, what do I mean faith? What, what, again, but door, but door, and for every generation, faith will have faith. What, what does that mean? So that means when things are not going so well, you have a Holocaust, there are terrible things happen, but door, but door, emuna to. The Jew has faith. Yes, this is a song of thanksgiving, but you know what? Through much of Jewish history, people have not had so much to say thank you for. There have been times where it's not so easy to say thank you. Right, uh, the Anshe Knesset Hagdola cut out, or they they restored Daniel and Yirmiyahu cut out ha, ha, Hagadova han, Hanara from the Shmon Esrei. There, where's the greatness of God? The temples destroyed. The God's not great. The non-Jews are dancing around. Uh, you can't say things that aren't true. 
can't say, uh, you know, so the Gansha gets, look, coming back to Israel, <coughs> they, they restored it. So, but there were times when we, we couldn't really sing Mizmor Litoda in a certain sense. So I think Bador Bador, Emunato. That sure. know that even when things aren't good, have Emuna faith that they will be good. Okay. Koran <laughs> says faithful faith. He says, not Emunato means faithfulness, God's faithfulness. Is right, this, God's faithfulness that he will bring goodness to us. No, no. Now, I, I mean, right, you don't get, right. I mean, obviously they're doing one word translation, but I think it's the Adimi, Dor Bador, since throughout the history, now Dor, Dor Bador is like the long times of, of Jewish history, from generation to generation, often it's not thanks we have to have, we have emuna. That's why at night, after Shema, it's emeth ve emuna. Emunah oh. is faith. Night is the time of darkness and it represents the negative period. So at night, you have to have emet the emunah. In the morning, emet the yatsiv. You, you anchor it in. It's right there. It's right before us. We can feel it. We can see it in the daytime. Things are good. Abraham Davin's Davin Shachrit, Yaakov Davin's Mariv. It's not stum like, uh, you know, oh, they happen to be that time of the day. That's not what I mean. Abraham is hope in the Jewish future and Yaakov is exile, of course. So Yaakov has to be doubling Mariv. Abraham is doubling oh. Yitzchak's in the middle. Okay, we, we discussed that also right at the beginning, Shurim, a little bit. Okay, let's just do a very quick review. And I see there are a few comments that I haven't had a chance to look at yet. So we basically discussed there's uh, really two ways to understand Mizmor Litoda. Either it's representing the Korban Toda. It is a song that was sung when people brought the Korban Toda. Korban Toda, it looks like it's the four people of the Yorde Hayam, people cross the sea and uh, were sick, have to bring it. The Gemara never says they have to bring it. The Gemara just says they have to give thanksgiving. And I think even if they do it, the Torah doesn't want to write that. If you have to force somebody to say thank you, it's not much of a thank you. The Torah describes if we're bringing the Korban Toda, the Korban Toda is special. It had to be eaten with more people because they had less time and more food to eat. It had chametz. That's more joyous. It's a more joyous food. So it was the idea of Thanksgiving. So that's the um, that's the one half of the the um, the mizmor. Or you can understand it um, as just general forms of Thanksgiving. General forms of Thanksgiving. And of course, the difference is when do you say it? Right? Do you not say it on Shabbos, Pesach, which is sort of the Ashkenazi custom? Or say no, we should always say it. And some people have the custom; they say it on Shabbos. Without Mismor Litoda, even if it's talking about <coughs> Korban Toda, they still wanted to say it. They just took out the word Mismor Litoda, beautiful. And uh, then it's a form of general thanksgiving onto, um, on, on, onto God. And then we just uh, went through uh, the, the earth. We, rep we, we sing to God. It's not just human beings sing. We sing with instruments. We sing with our voice. But the earth sings. Nature sings. The vastness of the universe sings out to God. Kolar, it also implies non-Jews, of course, right? Temple was based on non-Jews. We have to have simcha and rina, simcha, continuous state of joy. It's not that we should worship God with joy, which is true. If you don't worship God with joy, it's not worship of God. How can you worship God if you're not, then it's not worship. The, to be in the presence of God means you're, there's joy. But unfortunately, life isn't always like that. Okay, yes. So then we, uh, you're right. Therefore, until so we don't really worship God. And Abel is exempt. He's not allowed to do any yes. sort of mourner because he can't really worship God. He can't yes. worship God the same way because uh, there's a, a total discount. And we, Paskin, we, uh, that they're not allowed to do mitzvah. So that, but we have emuna that uh, <clears throat> not now the day will come and uh, the, and that's what, to give thanks. And therefore, the Midrash says this unbelievable Midrash that even though in the Torah you have all these korban and the Torah is never supposed to change, but the Midrash says black and white, then in the future there will be no korban except the korban toda, no korban chatat, no mincha, no shlamim, no nothing else, no, no korban pesach. So, so we have a uh, lot. So that's uh, okay. That's uh, more or less a little bit. And remember, next week, please, God will give this year 5 30 Eastern time. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 5.30 Portugal time, 12.30 Eastern time, 7.30 in Israel. That's a little too late. I will not be on the sitter. It's not fair. I, I appreciate everybody who comes. And I know people, they have busy schedules, so it's not fair to make somebody, you know, I have a, a sitter class, not at the regular time. But those who are interested in Perkei Avod and those who aren't here today because their schedule allows them to come at 12.30, 9.30, let them know that they can come next week to a shear on Perkei Avod. So that's, please God, what we'll do for next week. But just let me quickly go through the question. Why they leave a recovering from an illness, which is uh, included? Uh, it's not left out. No, that's one of the four people recovering from an illness, I think. Um, yeah. I don't think so. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll take another quick look. Yeah, yeah, Bracha 54b. 
We thank God for unknown miracles, correct. And Modim also, yes, yes. Modim is also a way to thank you. I mean, that's why, by the way, we have to say Modim. In other words, Modim de Rabbana. Like, we can't just answer Amen to Modim. When the Chazan says, we say Modim, because you can't delegate Thanksgiving. Excuse you can me. delegate Shofar, you can delegate Megillah, you can delegate Giddish. just have to listen. But it's not enough to listen to somebody else saying thank you and you answer, I mean, you have to say it yourself. And therefore, when the chazan repeats the modim, we have to say modim too. Correct. According to Wogamoth, modim is for miracles we are aware of. I, oh, we are or aren't aware of. So I'm at both. Okay, interesting. I'm not sure. I thought he said aren't, but both are. Some say one, some say the other. Miracles, We. I thought he said we aren't, but okay, thank you. The web telescope can see back 13 I thought the Webb telescope is only four and a half billion years. What's uh, what's nine billion years? What's, uh, no, they just years? found a galaxy 13.3 <clears throat> billion years from Earth. I when did they find this galaxy? No, no, but they're actually showing like pictures from galaxies of four. The pictures are from four and a half billion years ago. They're from galaxies. No, that, no, the, that's light, the, no, no, the yeah. light that they see now left that galaxy 13.3 billion years ago. Right, that would be even light year. I thought it was four and a half. Whatever it is, it's amazing. Whatever it is, it's it's mind-boggling. Where, where is the Mayim Sha'Allah Shemayim? Where's the what? The Mayim Sha'Allah Shemayim. We say uh, every oh. day in the davening. Yeah, I, I don't know. So right, right there, Hashemayim Shemayim Lashem. Um, Rav Shechter once told us, I think it was a Satmar Chassi, maybe it wasn't Satmar, said the moon land was fake news. They didn't have that term back then, fake news. But the moon landing isn't true because it says in the Pasuk, Hashemayim, Shemayim, Lashem, Ba'aretz, not only Bnei Adam. So how could it be? It's a contradiction to the Pasuk that man can, Neil Armstrong can make a small step for man, but a giant step for mankind, right? Uh, uh, okay, no, no, no. We don't take these sukim literally, but uh, obviously the imagery, uh, people, right? It's, by the way, that's why some people explain the Torah has creation in six days, because uh, what's the Torah going to write? Creation happened 14 billion years ago. Well, people won't know what you're talking about. Nobody understood this. So when we understand the Rambam, the Rambam even writes in the more the more Nebuchim that had he been convinced, he wasn't convinced, but had he been convinced that the Greeks were right, that the earth was eternal, there was no Big Bang, there was no moment of creation, the earth always, that was the Greek belief. He would reinterpret Bereshit for Elohim. He says that he doesn't think the Greeks are right. He doesn't have to reinterpret Bereshit Elohim. God made a big bang. I mean, that's what we assume, right? Whatever it is. But uh, so new discoveries come in science. The Torah is not a literal book. That's uh, that's not our tradition. We don't understand things literally. Okay, because I'm not going to assume kind of your site. Yeah, <clears throat> so I, I have to look into that a little bit. I don't, I mean, somebody once asked me, if, yeah, getting married on your site. There is such a custom. We treat a your site like a quasi veil. I don't know, is that a real halacha? Like, I don't know. I think if your first cousin is getting married in your I don't want to paskin that with us, but I, I think you should go to the wedding. That's off the top of my head. But uh, listen, I, I don't want, uh, did anybody read um, halacha of the Shlomo Brody? Did anybody read Shlomo Brody's article? He wrote the halacha of the complex published by Corin. He used to write in Jerusalem Post. And he, um, he wrote a fascinating article in Chakira uh, last year about how the 12 month parents can be mochel their avelus uh, after like for the Yud Beit Chodesh, even Shloshi maybe. And he said how his father insisted that he not, um, that he is mochel the avelus and he insists that if he gets invited to wedding, he go to the wedding and he not say he's in avelut. And he wrote a whole article about the halachas of that. And he quoted many gadolim would tell their children, don't mourn for me for 12 months. I, I don't know if they meant not to say, say Kaddish. I'm not saying that, but you don't have to not go to a, 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 a simcha because of that. It's not well known that Hamon Am and Rav Shechter, apparently his father told him that, and Rav Shechter used to go to weddings during the year for his father, and then people said to him, like, well, what, what, what are you doing here? Because the, the average person doesn't get this, so he stopped going because he felt it was like people were, you know, uh, but uh, he wrote a fascinating article. I don't know if it'll catch on that uh, parents, you know, um, so I don't know. I, I don't know that you shouldn't, you know, if your your best friend or your aunt or whatever, your first cousin is getting married or your nephew on uh, on your yard site. I don't know. I would think to go, but I'm not. I am not holding by right there. But yeah, normally that was such a custom. Okay, content content versus getting transitory. Yeah. Okay, a new puppy. Okay. Okay. Um, you have your first grandchild. Yeah, that would be great, Rena. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, my Hasidish of Bankrad, yeah. Okay. And uh sir Malpin Rav Mayor Levush Ben Yechiel Michal was sir. Thank you very much. I 
didn't have his name up on. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you very much. Look forward to uh, Let's Thank give Thanksgiving. You. We should always be, we should be Zochet merit that we can worship God. A Jew should always be smiling normally for normally be happy, be joyous. You know, there's so much good. So, by the way, you know, so you many were, problems you, in the world. Let's let's focus on you the were good talking, moment. you were talking about Rabbi Wolgamuth. Uh, uh -huh. we have someone we have someone here in our neighborhood who is a student of his who grew up in Boston, a student of his who has devoted his life now to Bure Tfila. And he gives a right. weekly shear online. Who's that? His name is Abe Katz. He's a lawyer. Oh, and he has a, he gives a shear every Tuesday night online, you know, on, on Bure Tfila. Now he's doing uh, Shabbos davening. He had done all of weekday davening. He did Birch okay. Hazamazon. And uh, he constantly quotes Rabbi Rav Gamuth, who, you know, he attributes his you know, lifelong passion for studying right. tefillah to him. I, I think also the person, the person who wrote the book now, Usher Reichert, is someone who I know very well. Also, he's a neighbor of my daughter's in Ramat Beit Shemesh, and uh -huh. uh, he's a wonderful guy. And he's also a you know a student of Rav Wolgamuth. Right. He, I don't know him, a, but yeah, he yeah. writes in the introduction. Listen, I think it's uh, almost a tragedy that so few schools teach tefillah. They, they insist that the kids say every word. I well, this is something the Rav seemed to have insisted Correct. in my mind. Correct. He insisted. Okay. He was that, a true God. And that's, the why, and that's, the good, that's why Rav Olgamuth was given the charge from the Rav that he's yeah. got to teach Bure Silla. Right, but uh, unfortunately, I mean, name, uh, name two other schools that do that. And they, they have no time. And, and they, I, I told the school they should dub in a, a third of what they, it's ridiculous. They have to rush through dubbing in 20. You don't have to dub in the whole thing. Say I, every day, say one parrot can tell him and switch it, say it out loud. Uh, they figure what uh, an 11 year old kid, even a 17 year old kid doesn't have to dub in everything. So it's in hundred. I agree 100%. The first scene when, when I was in school, we didn't, we didn't, we did that in school. We didn't. What school uh, did you go to? I was, I know, I not when I went, I, when I was involved in, in, you know, in, in Stanford, oh, in bicultural. Oh, yeah, that's we, the way it should be. But it's it doesn't look orthodox to skip. That's the I'm problem correct. today. Yeah, but Everything did, the conservative we, movement does becomes like trape. It's terrible. So, right. Oh, did, my we, God. That wouldn't be orthodox if we skipped yeah. uh, Baruch yeah, yeah. Hashem, uh, Yibai Baruch David one day. Okay, it's yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. But Rabbi, enjoy, what, what, enjoy, mean, enjoy the trip. Okay, thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah, Shuli Mishkin, yeah. Mishkin yesterday yeah. quoted quoted my brother. My brother is also a tour guide in Israel. Oh, and oh. Shuli uh, quoted an article that my brother had written about Gamla. And uh, she okay. quoted it in, in the class yesterday. And uh, it, was, it was interesting because I knew, I knew that he was in touch with Shuli Mishkin about this, uh, wow. you know, about this thing with Gamla. But uh, it, it was it was very nice, wonderful yeah. series. It just so all right, yeah, we had just everybody. arrived. That's when we were arriving. Okay, yeah, yeah, great. Okay, okay, please, God. Okay, hope Anyhow. to see you. those who can make it next week for Perkeia book. Great, I enjoy. Understand. We'll see you then in in two weeks, and uh, feel free to enjoy always invite us, man. Thank you. Enjoy, but, uh, enjoy the trip. Have a great Thank Shabbat. you very much. Okay, everybody, you <laughs> have a good Shabbat. Bye bye. Yes. yes. Shabbat shalom. Have the trip with him, all right. Mrs. Zucker, what, what do you want to say? No, just say, you know, absolutely, to, to, to do the trip with Simcha. You know? Oh, yeah, but everything with Simcha. Thank yes. you. Thank you. We should do everything with Simcha. Okay. Thanks a lot. Be well. Bye bye. Oh.